Good afternoon, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Mark Anderson, the Director of Education of Domus Academy. With this event, uh, this was an inaugural event. I'm very happy and pleased to launch a new series of digital meetings and conversations with some of the most active in, uh, managers and leaders of most interesting international companies. The series will host and offer occasion to meet these people through discussion, through interview, of uh, the people whose vision guides companies, inspires a culture beyond the products, and who bring innovation in at all levels or into their organization at all levels. Our, our guests will transmit, I'm oh, sorry, the guests transmit and uh, this, and uh, in some way are connected, all will be connected to the design and visual culture of Italy, but what they do is they project and have brought and used their talent, their expertise, their vision to the global arena. It's my pleasure today to introduce our first guest, PJ Natuzzi of the Natuzzi Group and uh, our journalist, and uh, interviewer who will guide the series, Katerina Lunghi. Uh, Katerina, with this, I'd like to pass the word to you so you can introduce today's guest and begin the conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you for being with, with us, everyone. And thank you, uh, PJ Natuzzi. <laughs> thank you, Mark. PJ, I'm quite agitated. <laughs> No you volume. Ah, yeah, 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 PJ, I'm okay. quite nervous because you are better than me. You yourself uh, organized uh, a series of uh, conversation with uh, your friends, uh, Sofa Talks, uh, and uh, you seemed quite uh, enjoying, right? Interviewed uh, people and asking uh, into their private lives. So I'm super happy to do that with you. And uh, PJ Natuzzi, or Pasquale Junior, aka PJ, is the Chief Creative Officer at Natuzzi, a very historical company, the largest Italian furniture company in the world, and one of the main players in the industry globally, founded by your father, Pasquale, in uh, like six, uh, more than 60 years ago, correct? Yeah, 61, actually. 61. So, PJ, I'm curious about what does uh, Chief Creative Director mean? What do you have to do daily? And uh, let look at the picture that we have prepared for you. I don't see anything. I don't know what's going on. I just see you and, and Professor Zanderson pictures, and that's it. No, in a minute. Is it right? Yes. See now. Eh? Okay. Now I see a picture. Now, now I see a picture. I want to see the second one. Ah, okay. Okay. Why don't work? Uh, hey, here we are. Ah. <laughs> so PJ. No virus will ever break the bond with my roots yes. <laughs> so there is also your caption so tell us starting maybe from your picture that i think is very iconic right you looking into the future you are in apulia so please let's start maybe with this so Basically, uh, if, if you want me to answer to your first question of what a, a chief creative officer does, basically, you know, today's brands uh, are more and more driven by design thinking, by experiences, by how creativity can serve at the best the businesses. 
So my role is to take into account every step of the way in which the brand expresses itself uh, in order to create experiences throughout marketing, product design, and retail design, store design, digital communication, uh, 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 in a holistic sense, to drive the next, you know, the next innovation of the brands in terms of, again, uh, uh, communication, experiences, you know, to take care that the brand is is growing the right way. Let's say that I'm the dad or or the stepfather of, of this brand today, and I want him to grow at the best in the right direction. So myself today, after having spent, you know, uh, five years creating and restructuring the marketing department of Natuzzi, my role today is to, uh, of course, work on the new visions of brand uh, building and, and narrative and storytelling to brief uh, designers and creative minds to work on new projects. Uh, I take also a big part of my time to work with the marketing team in order to be always in strict relationship with the product and the narrative of it and create a whole, you know, uh, storytelling driven uh, design process in which marketing and communication and product design and styling, they can work really strictly. And uh, I also work, I spend big time in research and development in prototyping products because, you know, from a good idea to a nice render to a very well designed and made product, there is a huge, huge uh, work and strive to do. So basically, this is what I do. And uh, I, I also have wear other hats in the company, but as a creative director, this is my main task. In the meantime, uh, if we talk about this picture, American, uh, black American woman, very beautiful. Uh, my father is who you know, so he's the founder of this company and is an Apulian man. So I have a mixed blood, a mixed re DNA, and uh, and 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 but but big part of it is 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 really is really uh, uh, coming from Puglia. You know, my 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 blood, my roots are there, and and I was born in this in, in and raised in Puglia, and. Five, six years ago, we thought that this being a Pulian and, and, and you guys, girls, whoever is listening, uh, you know that in Italy, big parts, the majority of design brands, high-end brands are coming from Brianza, from Milano, from possibly Florence or Venice, but there's no one down there. And, and, and we are pretty much proud of being Apulians, are pretty much proud of, uh, of, of coming from that magical place, which I hope all of you can sooner or later come and visit. And so we wanted to use this as a natural brand and translate that into many senses, trying to uh, uh, reshape the, the design of this brand and the way that the storytelling is interpreted and the way the communication is managed and the way the experiences through the stores are designed to use this, this Mediterranean DNA, this Apulian DNA and translate it into a lifestyle. So PJ, I, I, I do appreciate that you mentioned Brianza. I'm connect. I'm joining you from Lake Como. I'm based here and uh, it's like the area of Brianza that is the historical district of furniture and design but it's very good that you mentioned that uh, you are the largest italian furniture company not from brianza but from a, a southern region with some specific soul uh, and characteristic that uh, you highlight quite a lot uh, in your collection and also i'm thinking about the new collection with the nika zupach deep uh, line uh, that is inspired by the mediterranean lifestyle right so there is like a quite genius logic that influences uh, Matuzzi DNA quite a lot. Definitely, yes. Uh, I have to be honest with you. As I said in the beginning, I started to work in the company uh, 10 years, nine years ago. I had many roles, but at the beginning I was just a program manager. So my, 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 my role is quite, it was 
related to the controlling process into the marketing department. It was pretty much frustrating and bro and boring because I define myself a creator, uh, a thinker, but in the meantime, I want to be a maker. So I go through the thinking of something, <laughs> the making into the R and D and, and I want to make things happen. I want to go get that thing. I want to make you and my one, one of my mottos is dream. Look at you. <laughs> yes. you really enjoy right what do you do i you are i enjoy but yes. i don't the, the face the face of the people around me were, were not that happy so maybe i'm not that good uh it was <laughs> it was not the best shot ever but it tells a little bit the way i do my things you know i, I get into things physically and mentally i have no boundaries when i create and um, and going back to this Apulia thing, uh, six years ago, uh, when I started to work on the communication department, I had the great fortune and opportunity to work with Concept Lancio. Concept Lancio is the right and has always been the right hand arm of Bernard Arnault, you know, the owner of LVMH, the, the company that owns Louis Vuitton, Dior, Acqua di Parma, uh, Don Perignon, the biggest, one of the biggest company and one of the richest guy in Europe today, the second, I think. And I had the fortune to work with her two years, one year and a half, working on how to evolve the Natuzzi brand, make it iconic and create a lifestyle brand with a affordable luxury perception. We don't want to be extreme luxury. We want to be affordable, get in every people's home. And thank God design is about that. But once I worked with, uh, with uh, the communication of Natuzzi on this iconic Capulia, iconic Mediterranean DNA, uh, I, after two, two years, two, three years working on that, I discovered that we were creating a gap from the communication of Natuzzi and the product design of Natuzzi. CJ, I need to make a step backward. So your father founded the Natuzzi and the core business was the leather sofa. And the, your father literally made America sit down, right? So I would like you tell us about uh, the first step in the US uh, of uh, Pasquale Natuzzi. Uh, I love the messy department store uh, uh, determination and success. Uh, and you see these images of the first uh, sofas. And then uh, we are going into the new era with you, with Marcel Banders, uh, Ross Lovegrove, uh, and the Circle of Harmony. But uh, tell more, uh, I, I think, about what your father did. And I think that now, we too, your father has trouble, right? How do you convince them uh, in your crazy ideas? <laughs> I, I hope I have to be, um, I have to, to synthesize it right, because it's such a long story. But um, basically, my father was 18, 19, and he started his own small workshop in Puglia, in the deep south of Italy. And, and he wanted to make furniture, okay? His father was a woodcraft. Uh, he had, you know, uh, the making in his hands, in his soul, in his DNA. And he was, he has his own laboratory where he had, he, he was employing two people that were underage and he was just 19. So we were talking about the early uh, uh, 60s and, 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 and something that, you know, was pretty much common at that time to have kids working in those woodwork or, or laboratories. Uh, 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 so the, the Apulia region, the region in which we're based, they were giving incentives to small companies to do an exhibition in Canada, okay? So he took these funds and he went in Canada uh, to display one sofa in a one meter by one meter space. It was basically one seat. It could, it could have display a very tiny product that he was showing. But at the end of the day, this fair, this exhibition was not Milan Design Week, was not Salone del Mobile, because around him, he was surrounded by uh, birds, flies, things for farmers, trucks, and, and, and it, 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 tractors. It was a fair that was, was, had nothing to do with, with, the, with design, nothing to do with the color, nothing, nothing to do with furniture. So he was there, he was shocked, and he was like, 
what should I do now for one week in Canada? And and when he was walking out of the fair, he saw a post of a, a trip uh, all inclusive from Canada to New York to learn English. So my father at that time was not speaking English at all. And so he said, you know what, I'm going to be here. I'm going to just waste my time. Let me fly to New York and see what's going on out there. And he was a guy who did, spent all his life in the south of Italy and never seen anything about uh, uh, the, 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 the foreign, for, you know, overseas countries. So he went to New York and he discovered Manhattan, skyscrapers, you know, the big city, the city that never sleeps. He went there and he jumped into Macy's, you know, Macy's is one of the biggest department stores in America. He went there and he saw at the final floor, at the last floor, the ninth floor, I think, of the uh, uh, of the Macy's store, I think, on Fifth Avenue. Uh, he saw that sofas were extremely expensive, ugly, uncomfortable, and all made of black leather and brown leather. You know, the color on leather was not really there. So this guy asked to, with his very poor uh, English, ask, I think he was making signs with his hands. I don't know how he did it, but he managed to ask to, the, to, to one of the salespeople on the floor to talk to a buyer, a buyer of Macy's. He wanted to sell them his own product. He was sure that from Puglia, he could have exported products that were extremely better looking, uh, uh, much more uh, less expensive, so cheaper, well-made and, and with colorful leather because his instinct was always colorful. My father had the fortune to be dressed by Versace in the 90s. He was wow. dressing these this, this colorful silk shirts of Versace in the 80s and the 90s, and he was one of his ambassadors. So he loved color. And, no, uh, I, I am checking now the, is a, a short, but it's all black, <laughs> that picture. <laughs> Eventually, he changed a little bit over the time, but uh, yeah, so he, he managed to do this. He managed to, to sell to Macy's uh, his first sofa. After a week, he went back to Italy. He made the sofa and shipped it to New York, and Macy's said, we want you as a vendor, and he started to sell to Macy's. He started to sell to all of the biggest retailers in America because he basically found the best formula of comfort to the product, visual comfort, that fluffiness that was inviting people to sit in that sofa. My father always says that to work with Natuzzi, you have to design a, pro design a product where you can sit in the sofa, not uh -huh. on the sofa. So the comfort is extremely uh, important for him, has always been. And, uh, and, and, uh, and, you know, in those years, all the biggest retailer of America were buying Natuzzi sofa. He always tells me, when I dream about evolving Natuzzi in this, you know, new experiential and lifestyle and, and very evolved and, and contemporary brands, he tells me, okay, keep doing, keep dreaming, keep doing. But remember that in the 80s, I was selling Natuzzi couch in gasoline stations. You could have found Natuzzi sofa everywhere. You know, Natuzzi sofa were really everywhere. And so when you because, want to represent... You know, from that uh, beginning, uh, so now you have uh, the company has more than uh, almost uh, 5,000 employees, right? And uh, about 500 stores uh, worldwide. So, yeah. It, yeah. I mean, it's like the self-determination of your father, the vision that also is quite uh, the, the courage of Italian entrepreneur, right? The, the results are still there. You are keep growing. You are uh, now the new the new generation. So you have also a big uh, challenge on your shoulder, right? <laughs> to... I think if if you look back at uh, Enzo Ferrari, Olivetti, Mr. Lavazza, Benetton, all these big great entrepreneurs of the 70s, 60s, 50s, 90s uh, uh, of Italy. These guys were real game changers, because if we look at it uh, today, maybe we get used to the dimension of their, their companies, we get used to the awareness of their brands, the brands that they've created, but think about it. Think about it, 
back in the days, these people were real game changers, real game changers. And for sure, their, their passion, their, their being workaholic, their hunger, their striving uh, made them who they are, for sure. And yeah, PJ, this is the last, oh, sorry. This is the last slide that is keep moving, keep striving, uh, keep working from your Instagram again that I think uh, embodies really well uh, the character of your father, of uh, yourself and the entrepreneur that uh, you mentioned, right? Well, so, it, is, it is what it is. You, you cannot achieve results today in a world that is extremely uh, competitive, where we live in a state of excellence. If you don't achieve excellence, if you don't give to your consumer the best service, if you don't give to the people that you want to engage with the best experience, you're not gonna succeed. So we live in an era and we are about to jump in the new era after this COVID-19, but something that I, I'm sure we will keep, we will bring in the new era is this concept of, you know, excellence. It's, it's really something we need. And they, they, they were, I think they, they had this research of excellence embedded in their blood. But uh, PJ, and, uh, after uh, like uh, you studied uh, at Bocconi University economics and management, yeah. then uh, you already told us uh, when you enter in the company, but when you were a child, your destiny, your entry in Toots was already decided or you had a different secret dream in your career? Okay, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> So basically, my father, you know, my father is called Pasquale and, and I'm Pasquale Jr. So maybe if you make that math, that math, two plus two, I think makes four in this case. So I think he had in his mind a very clear vision of what I would have been doing in my future in my uh, grown up life. So I knew I would have ended up in doing something at Natuzzi. I knew it. PJ, what do you want to and I was saying I will become the prep. Yeah. No, no, you are there. Perfect. I you lost you for a moment. You do you hear me? Yeah, uh, yeah, great. Okay. No, so I, I was saying that you know he always asked me, uh, and he always taught me, and he, he was feeding my mind and my memory as, as a child that one day I would have I would have joined the company. Of course, when I was a I was a kid, my dream was to become the president. Today, that's not my dream. I mean, being a president today, is not, it's, it means nothing. You, you need to have uh, a specific role, a specific talent, and try to make it uh, useful for the company. So I don't, I don't dream of becoming a president. I, I, I want to be somebody that can make an impact, that can make the difference for Natuzzi, mainly in its own uh, value proposition, design thinking, and branding. That's what I want to do today. So yes, I knew it. I, I, my father always tried to bring, bring me there. But while I was growing, when I was 19, 20, I, I, I started to feel that I wanted to become, become a sort of venture capitalist. You know, I wanted to invest in multiple businesses and start my own businesses. And so when I was 19, uh, I started a company. I founded a brand that was called The Secret Society. Oh, uh, yeah, about fashion, right? A fashion startup. Yeah, and, and basically, the idea there was to, uh, in the 2007 8, uh, the, the moment was pretty much uh, uh, angry. It was pretty much sad. There, you know, we were coming up from, out from a big crisis. And my idea was that, like in the prohibitionism, uh, all the people that, that wanted to, to, to share happy times together and have fun together and, and share values that we wrote in a manifesto, they had the opportunity to uh, recognize themselves at the sunlight through our accessories. So while, while they were uh, obliged and forced to meet up and have fun together in secret places, they could have recognized themselves uh, at the sunlight through the accessories that I was designing. So I was designing accessories and selling those accessories, but in the meantime, in the packaging of the accessories, there was a QR code 
that was allowing you to get on a social media platform where you could have interacted with those people. Maybe that were buying... later you will go back to the secret society, right? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I tried to do something on my own and it was a success because in, 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 in the first month we had more than 120 stores buying our products. Uh, selling both online, selling in physical retail stores. It was a success, but then I discovered that when you start a company, you either do it alone and you run for your own idea, or if you find some partners and associates, you better be sure they are the right ones. And unfortunately, I, I didn't manage to find the right partners because we fought and then everything went bad. But yes, I, I, I had the impulse. I wanted now, to do my own things and for sure I will do one day. But I mean, I think that you have to a lot to work right now anyway. But PJ, at that time you didn't find the right partners. But I think that with the Natuzzi starting two years ago with Marcel Vanders, then Ross Lovegrove last year, and the, the partner for the Circle of Harmony this year, you have found the right partners, the, the right network of designers to work with, right? So how, what is the value of collaboration today? And if they help Natuzzi to go into the new era, that is also thanks to your youth. You are 29 years old, so also you are so lucky to breath our contemporary times uh, and to know maybe what the next generation uh, want. That First of all, I'm lucky. I'm lucky not only because I'm young and I can interpret where the world is moving today, but I am also lucky because I have the opportunity to to shape, to craft the brand, you know, to put my hands onto it. I cannot just say, you know, I would do this and give advices to people in the company. I'm the one who can make things happen and I'm extremely lucky. But in the meantime, I feel and I truly believe that what we need today is that contamination, is that <laughs> these days is not the best thing, uh, uh, but, but I'm talking about that creative contamination, you know, that that the desire to share ideas and to blend different DNAs uh, with the purpose of evolving each other's DNAs. And this, this, what we, this is what we basically did this year with the Circle of Harmony, but this is what I've been trying to do in the last two years. Because when I, when I met Marcel Banders and I said, Marcel, this is my dream. I'm, I want to evolve Natuzzi into a lifestyle brand, a high-end interior design brand. I want to evolve and grow it there, but I want to make Natuzzi a dynamic brand. I want to make Natuzzi an experiential brand. Help me out and let's do something together. He loved the idea, but when he came to the factories, to our headquarters, he talked to my father also. And my father was always talking about harmony, 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 how harmony is important you like for us. For harmony. <laughs> and, and, and Marcel, he told me after, time, after some time, he watched Gabriele and he said, what do we do now with harmony? We, we, because these people, Marcel, Gabriele, Marcel Banders, does nothing that is about harmony. All they do is about contrast, is about ex, you know, extreme creativity. Whereas Natuzzi is more, is more smooth in its way of expressing uh, creativity. So I feel that when you take two elements and you mix them together, two very different elements, and you have a very clear idea of where to go, in which direction to drive that evolution, you can make things happen and you can make them very wonderful and relevant. So uh, this is what I try to find in these creative people. I try to find somebody that is very different from us or, or even close, but somebody that has uh, that, 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 you know, that creative impulse that attracts me, that I think that can, you know, few drop of its DNA uh, blend into the Natuzzi DNA can make something, something good work out of it. And, and, and so I went back into uh, uh, the history of Italian design, of course, contemporary design. And I wanted to take one of the funniest and the most amazing and fun and, and real and true women of the design, Italian 
era, which is Paula Navona. And together, we had so much fun together because, you know, something I, I like. I also had fun with Mika Zupanch. There are pictures of you, like, uh, picking up paper at the airport. <laughs> I, was, I was talking uh, with my marketing team today because we have some projects going on. The collection has not been yet unveiled, but we have more than seven collections that we would have presented in Milano. We have... You are going to present something in Shanghai in June, right? We, we are doing, we are doing uh, in Shanghai, we are doing a Congress, our own event, our own mini Salone del Mobile, mini design week. We are doing it in Shanghai in a in few weeks from now. Uh, so I was thinking about uh, that morning with Nika today because it, <laughs> that, this, we, we, made, uh, we, we made this table that is called, uh, that it, it's made with a sort of marble, okay, marble top out of the deep collection and basically this was the the saturday morning before italy put the whole country in lockdown it the exact previous morning and we went together we were in puglia together we, we, we were work, working on the, the final prototypes before milano and we said we have to go and we have to pick the marble ourselves uh, because it's not real marble from stone it's a composite okay? from verona right from Verona. So we took a plane, a, a, a flight of five together. I took a car and we drove together to select every single stone and piece of material that composed this incredible tabletop. So I, I, th I think that the story is special also because the next day, everything stopped, you know, the world froze <laughs> no, and we were all locked down. Action. Yeah. So you are very hands-on, as uh, you were saying uh, before. You are into any steps and any process. And PJ, um, there is no other way. I remember uh, your conversation with the Saturnino, which is an Italian famous musician. And um, it's unforgettable when uh, he um, presented the book Rapid Response. The Rapid Response is that ability to make a decision under very difficult circumstances, like when you are in an emergency with a doctor, a car accident. So going into business, have you have had some uh, rapid response uh, for some uh, collection decision, business, uh, that uh, you were very in trouble to make a decision? But uh, it seems well, to make... Uh, I think it happens. It's, it happens, I don't want to say every day, but, but you know, we, were, we, we live in very uncertain times. It's not just because of COVID-19, but, you know, the world is, is, is not easy. It's not easy to excel. It's not easy to survive in today's businesses. So, I mean, I have a team of over maybe now i have 60 people something like that working in my team but plus i work very strictly with the research and development department that counts over 150 people who are there so whenever we make a decision on a product and we want to make a change there's a there's a there's a chain of 150 people who are gonna be impacted by the choice and when we launch a new product we are going to launch something that not only is going to impact on people's lives and go maybe in people's homes, but it's going to impact on the life of more than 5,000 families that we employ. So I, I have that sense of uh, responsibility uh, on my shoulders, on every choice I make every time. I think what makes the difference uh, when you have to give a rapid response is your level of awareness of what you are doing of course uh you you need to have a clear vision i i i i, I would never compare my decision making with the with the doctor who has oh, to make oh, an open heart oh. surgery uh in in five seconds because we're talking of a, a, a different game there but in my case in my case i know what i'm doing i know where the brand should go i know what the product should look like and, and if I cannot, you know, fine tune or find the common ground with whoever might be the creative, uh, uh, might be the business partner, I take charge 
I take lead, I take my risk, and I go get it. Because and I think... PJ, how do you convince your father that it seems quite tough, right? So... <laughs> very like... tough. It's very <laughs> tough. It's very <laughs> <He's> a... <laughs> He is a very tough cookie. A very tough cookie. And, and, and the reality is that I believe in my idea and I love what I'm doing. And I think that un until the day I will be working in this company and try to make the impact that I'm doing and the change that I'm trying to see and evolve the, the brand, the design, the, the, the company in many ways, I will never stop expressing my ideas and fighting for those ideas. So even if there will be fights and there are fights every day, I'll keep going. <laughs> I'll we keep can... going because in the moment, of course, there, there might be things in which I believe that could be wrong and I, and I will do a step back. But if I fight, I fight because I believe in what I'm doing. I believe in my vision and, I, and the fight needs to happen. You need to fight for your idea. Otherwise, you say, your so role far, is useless. So far, the result and reality say that uh, you were right, right? So, so yeah. far, you have some satisfaction. You know, Caterina, I think there, there, there's, there's always because now I don't want to look like the revolutionary kid guy no, who goes there. No, and fights. Hey, we invited you as a first guest for this because for me, for us, you represent uh, an explosion of enthusiasm, determination, and. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. And I'm honored. I'm honored to be starting the Supernova talks. But I, I think you have to find talk. No, I want to to because. Some, I mean, we have a good, a great audience of people that are going to really write new pages of the future, students, designers, creatives. Uh, so it's, it's, I want to, to give the good message. I don't want to say yeah, also because they, we, they are going to record this and then we will we'll spread it through newsletter. So then we will work on this uh, with students quite a lot. Great. This is so I think that me. I, I'm not the son of my father. My father is a CEO and I am the chief creative officer of this company. So I have a role, he has a role. And whether that role one day might be taken by another CEO, I, I will possibly have to find fight for my ideas anyhow. So the point is, you need to find a way. Can you hear me? Yes. Do you hear me? For me so now, you need to find. You need to find the. Yeah, you need to find a way to interpret the priorities of the company, the priorities of your CEO, and make him successful as the leader of a company. But in the meantime, you have to earn that trust. You have to earn the trust that allows your CEO to give you the chance to show that what you want to do makes sense, can make success. So it's a dance, you know, it's like <laughs> dancing tango. You have to trust the, the guy who drives the dance, otherwise he's gonna, he gonna let you fall down on the floor. So it's a matter of uh, taking charge, taking lead, and showing that your ideas can make, can make an impact. You know, now I, have I, I spend less time in, in preparing a presentation, PowerPoints, but when I started, I was doing PowerPoints five times a day going there on that white big room and presenting my ideas. First time, no, and then you go back and then you present it again and then you find a way to, to translate your idea in a better way in order to be understood in the right way. It's really a continuous it's research. It's like an inside and outside jungle, right? It's not just looking for success with the market, the customer, but first of all, it's like to let your voice go out uh, with the uh, in, in the in the company so it's like a uh, double you have to find the balance you yeah, have to find, the company, yeah you have to find the balance but what i what i always say is that you know me and my father we can fight i we can have a discussion i can have a discussion with another top senior executive but at the end of the day, what we have to be always remembered, remembering and keeping in our minds is that we don't work for ourselves. 
We don't work for the CEO. We don't work for Natuzzi because Natuzzi is working for the market, is working for the consumers. If we don't give the best value, the best service, the best experience, the best emotions to these consumers, they're not gonna buy from Natuzzi. And Natuzzi is, gonna, is not gonna invest in me, is not gonna pay your salary. So let's always keep in mind, who are we talking to? Who is the audience? Who are we trying to, uh, you know, give sell those emotions to and 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 if you keep that in mind then i think that is a good that is a good you know navigator for you to take the right the, the decision the right direction and pj opposite so what convince you to say okay let's do that you convince me you are hired so at the beginning you have to convince your father your team now opposite if you have to hire a domus academy student an applicant what uh, what qualities you are looking for in a cv going uh... well it depends uh if i would be as i am looking nevertheless in fact i will ask domus academy some help in the following days and weeks but i'm looking for some creative people to work with me uh if it's a case of a creative human um, all i want to see is to be able to express creativity without boundaries at the beginning i want to see somebody that shows me something that stands out i don't want you know we live in a world where our closets i i said to myself before i started quarantine i will i will never buy another clothes to myself and i told you that i told you that and you told me i can't wait to go buy around i will not buy we are full of things we should stop buying for a moment we should we should th think twice you know we should think twice and be also more uh, sustainable in the choices we make so um i think that also in the product design our our our, our storage our, our our living rooms our our wardrobes any we are full of things you know of, of course there are less lucky uh, people in the world more poor people who cannot even eat but the majority of richest country of fortunate people that i guess we are talking to we we all have things we can avoid to to buy things and so natuzzi as a company i think it should be common in the market by doing things that are not out there things that that can Can you hear me? You yes. froze up. Yes, yes, yes. So when I look to uh, to work with someone, I want to I want I want to make sure that I have somebody that can work out with 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 outside of outside of the box, you know, that can can really interpret today's trend in a different way, in new ways. Thank God we have new media, we have new ways of communicating, new ways of creating, new ways of designing. So also in terms of technical skills, it's very important to see that, uh, you know, if, if I'm, I'm not good at using PowerPoint, I cannot use Rhino, I'm sorry, but if I'll be working with somebody who has to be uh, together with my mind, we should create together, but then he has to be my hands. Uh, I, I'm also be, uh, I would be very also keen on selecting somebody that has technical skills. And as a matter of fact, you know, the vision uh, I, 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 I had while I was working in the marketing department, I had the opportunity to hire uh, young, young talents. And one of the talents I've hired after four years working with me, he is now the marketing director of Natuzzi globally. So I invest in people big time and I want to work with people that can 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 express creativity, but but can also know how to uh, uh, put some some boundaries to creativity. Because sometimes sometimes if you are are creative and if you don't interpret who are you serving as a creative, you know, in my case, you will be working with me together. We will be working for our company where there is a CEO. So you know the process I will be talking before. You have to know who is your client and you have to give your client the best service. So sometimes you, I have been working with creative people that, that didn't have that, uh, that limit, that sense of responsibility while creating. 
and that is dangerous it's dangerous because you 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 can do things that that cannot sell you can do things that will never be accepted so be a good creative uh always keep never stop dreaming and envisioning evolutions and, and creativity but at the same time keep your feet on the ground and let's always find a way to find a common ground you know to convince the people to to invest in our ideas and uh, pj uh, with the uh, mika zumpa zupac you ask her about uh, her uh, uh, point of references yeah uh, so now the question is for you if i ask you um where you were a student who were your inspiration or now at uh, what people uh, you look at who, who inspires you today from any field she said coco chanel and virginia wolf uh, and uh, someone from the sport i'm curious uh, about uh, i know I that at fashion uh, we talk a lot about Virgil Abloh but I don't think it's uh, your source of inspiration right <laughs> not at all. okay first first of all I mean if we talk about people who inspires me or things that inspires me I I mean I think that whoever is listening this call would end up listening to my list the day after tomorrow because <laughs> I'm always trying to find inspiration whether it will be there are places that inspires me a lot a lot so i i have um, milano it gives me good inspirations always on what has to be that relevant elegance that finesse that italian aesthetic of blending elegance and finesse with a bit of evolution with new trends i think milano is is a country that being italian being also international but also being very in some cases posh uh and selective it can teach you how to uh uh, uh it, it it inspires me on that in that sense on the sense of elegance and being rigorous uh then i need to go to new york i need to go to new york every every other month because once i land in new york and i smell new york has not you, you don't you don't walk around new york and you smell the the bread the smell of the bread the perfume of of flowers forget about it. it all you can smell in new york is is a bad smell but yeah. <laughs> i i like that i like that bad smell you know i like that bad smell that bad smell and the the noises the dynamism of of this concrete jungle it gives me a lot so I, it gives me energy you know it gives me energy and it shows me where the world is is going same thing sometimes happen when i go in asia shanghai hong kong or even Viet vietnam I've very good uh, way also when it's up to design and aesthetic and, and, and communication. And PJ, But, so there are places together yeah. with my Puglia. With Puglia. With... And I would say people, we have a picture of you with Mario Mauro no, Porcini. So, no, no, I, I was saying, you know, when <laughs> there, are, there are places that inspires me a lot. But if we talk about people or trends there is a continuous research for me of finding somebody who inspires me find somebody who can mentor me not by staying alongside my life staying with me for a long time but even if it can give me one sentence it inspires me i've learned to to get those inspiration quickly so there is never somebody who uh, who is my hero and inspire me for a lifetime because the world moves the world changes and who who we thought was a genius three years ago today it's always no, no. It's, it's already substituted by some new te technology new ideas new trends so the world is moving fast but it, you have to be always uh focused on on where the world is going next so what are the new trends and try to find that new idea this is what i do i always try to make that continuous research uh and and of course these are the people that inspire me then when i was a kid uh i had heroes you know and i have to say that it's very actual these days because uh some of you might have seen uh the new tv series of netflix of michael jordan and so when i was a, a kid or even growing up i had two heroes and one was tiger woods and the other one was michael jordan uh you know i think that that's Something that inspires me of heroes is their being uh, 
resilient, you know, is there being extremely uh, a deep and, and, and fightful for, for the, their ideas? Is there being always focusing their, their eyes on the prize, on the target? And when you have such an excellent example of leadership, of sportsmanship, of, of, of power, of talent blend in this extreme passion that these sportsmen show, they inspire me a lot. I have to say that these heroes, these, these sportsmen that today, you know, everything is, is more and more driven by money, by, by, by image, by, by, by fame, how famous can you be? How many millions of followers can you, can you collect on your Instagram? I think that back in the days, these people were they were born with an impulse. They were born with an inspiration in them, in their hearts, and they were, you know, living for that. So sportsmen are, are a big source of inspiration in terms of 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 mantra, of, of, of way of living, you know. And I think, PJ, that also we can see that sport play a big role in your life uh, when uh, early in the morning you do workout, uh, you go to the gym. So it's like uh, sport as an attitude, right, of determination uh, also in business uh, and in life uh, in general. It seems that you have a quite uh, tough daily routine, not maybe over the weekends <laughs> on, and on holidays, but... Uh, <laughs> During the I have to say that, first of all, I, I believe that having a healthy uh, body and, and training and, and also uh, when I train, you know, I have my, my trainer who is more than a trainer for me. He's a coach. And every sport I start or I get into, I always try to find that feeling with who teaches me because I never start a sport. In fact, all of my friends, when we, when we do sports together, they tell me, yeah, but lower your sense of competition. Come on, relax. We're doing it just for fun. I never play sports for fun. I always want to play sports for win and be the number one. I, I'm sorry. I might be. I might be. I might be too much with this sentence, but this is the way I think. So even with sports, I always see it in a very competitive way. And, and I also believe that if you have that sense of competition in your sports, you can translate that in life. And, and, and both things are, are, are one inside the other. Let's say that sport can be a good, good teacher for your daily life. But on top of it, if you have a healthy living and you train well and you work out and you wake up early in the morning and, and I, when I'm down in Puglia, I, I, I go to the gym at uh, 7 a.m. and I leave the, the gym at 8.30. At 9, I'm in the office and I'm like a lion, you know, I'm ready to... <laughs> Oh, PJ, great! Uh, I'm already nervous. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I was saying that I train in early in the morning, morning, and then during lunchtime I train again. I I do uh, during my lunch break I train again because I'm already nervous because my my half a day has been too much on me. I need to release negativity, so I go do uh, uh, boxing usually. Uh, and then I go back to the office at 2.30 and I'm again relaxed and I have a good energy again. So I think that sports helps you to release and, 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 and pull out that negativity that sometimes we, we get. And that with the concentration uh, then. Uh, PJ, uh, I think that uh, I'm super happy about this conversation and uh, I would love to end like this because it's the perfect circle of what uh, I had in mind uh, to inspire, to give energy to our students above all in this quite uh, unknown and uncertain uh, time all over the world with this image keep moving keep striving keep working i got some messages with some colleagues they saying how cool is pj with all the tattoos uh, with the, the energy <laughs> so i think uh, that's what uh, we want to do with this series and also pj your friend uh, mauro porcini is joining us uh, later on in june uh, so I think we have uh, we will have uh, great uh, speakers and uh, also quite young with some vibe. Uh, and uh, if you like uh, to consider some students' portfolio, so maybe please do, please do, please do. I'm willing to 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 start uh, a, a team of creative people. Uh, so I need to I need definitely need some resume. So please, I don't know if you have the. 
uh, if you have the opportunity to to share my contacts, but if you want, I can do it virtually. I can somebody. Maybe you talk with the career service. <laughs> I take my business card. But now they are scared that they get have to get ready to deal with you for an interview with I, you. I, I think I think I I'm I don't want to be presumptuous, but I to me working has to be fun. You know, no matter how tough the day can be and how tough I can be and how negative the, the final results of a of a day can be. It has to be fun, so they won't they won't be bored working with me. Be sure. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. It was a great pleasure and fun uh, and it's inspiring. My we hope to see you soon in person. Maybe in two. Thank you all. Be good. Okay, be good. Be good. Say bye hi bye. to your father. I will. <laughs> thank you for will. from our director. He say thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ciao. Ciao. Stay cool. Ciao.